Hello and welcome back to Talbot Gourmet. I'm your host Kim Mallory. Today we're at the Peach Orchard of Michael Pfister and Peaches and Dreams, the Bed and Breakfast Inn. Hi well, Kim. Hello. Welcome. Nice to see you. Good to see you. As you can see the trees are loaded with fruit this year and um, that only comes from the uh, work that we did back from spring to now. Um, is it possible that we could take you back in time to when we were, when you were past left here, show you what got us to this point. Um, this tree is a Saturn uh, peach tree, uh, known as a donut peach. It's just done its um, its bloom, full bloom. It's now into where it sets the fruit stage. Right here is the uh, the blossom that has finished being uh, finished blossoming. Um, it's in the stage now where it's going into the shuck. It's where the blossom falls away from the piece of fruit that has been set. Um, the fruit is set behind the stamen. This, this area here is the stamen. As you see, it comes off. The shuck will finally fall off, and then you will have peach right here. Uh, as you see, this tree is quite large, hasn't been pruned yet. So what we're going to do next is prune the canopy, the outside and the inside to make the tree look like it's uh, an upside down umbrella. This year the fruit is so abundant and the reason why it's so abundant is the weather. It's been so dry, it's been so hot and peaches love it that way. And that's why we have such a, a, an abundance of peaches this year. Great. Can I show you some of the varieties of trees that we have? Sure, I'd love that. Thanks. Great. So Michael, tell me, what varieties are these peaches? Um, these, these, this variety is um, the uh, bounty variety. It's a late summer variety, um, and it's a very good peach. It's uh, bug resistant. Um, and it uh, is a large production peach. Can you tell me about the different flavors of peaches? A peach is a peach is a peach. Uh -huh. All peaches have great flavor. Size means a lot. A smaller peach doesn't always mean that's not going to be a good peach. The smaller peaches have the most flavor. The larger peach is filled with water and loses its flavor. Okay. Let me pull this one down here for you and pick it. This peach is perfectly ripe. Do you know how you tell a perfectly ripe peach? When the shoulder of the peach gives to gentle pressure, that is a perfectly ripe peach. Ah. Let's try this peach. I have a knife here. <laughs> it looks like a good one. And these are all freestone peaches. As you can see, the uh, peach comes right off of the stone. Color is so very important. It has to have a blush. If it doesn't have the blush, you're not going to have a ripe peach and a good flavored peach. Let's go over and look at another variety that we produce here at the orchard. Great. Kim, um, this is Mr. Fike, Kenny Fike. And Hello. he is one of the uh, original owners of this property. His family uh, farmed here for over 50 years. Wow. And he is my mentor. I'm a city boy. I came from the city. I saw peach trees. I thought this is the best thing since sliced bread and uh, I want to do it. I never realized how much labor and what went into uh, receiving a peach. So Mr. Fike, how long ago did this farm get started? Uh, my father and grandfather bought this farm in 1938 and it's been going ever since prior to uh, 
when Mike took it over. Great. And what type of peaches are these on this, this tree? This is a lowering one of the larger, sweeter peach. We, we call it our Cadillac when we were growing it. Uh, we had best luck with these when you could grow them. Great. And I assume the flavor is very sweet? Wonderful. Best you can buy. We're very fortunate. This is the first year that we've received the, this, we have this type of peach. Because of the bad weather we've had in the past four years, uh, these peaches do not like wet conditions. Ah, I see. And the flakes were known for their loring peaches. People come here from years and years ago just saying and asking about, can we get some of those great loring peaches? Wonderful. So is the flavor sweet? Very sweet. And and they're very juicy. When they're ripe, the, this is the type of peach that the juice runs down your arm. <laughs> Sounds very good. This is a red skin peach. This is a derivative of the Red Haven. The Red Haven is the early peach. This is a late summer peach. As you can see, the abundance of the peaches on here. They're red in color, but they're not ripe yet. Can we go up to the stand? I have some ripe ones up at the stand. Would you like to do that? I'd love to. And try some? Sure. Great. This is the red skin peach that we were talking about out there. Now this one is perfectly ripe. It looks so good. Let's, let's cut into this one and see what we have here. Oh my goodness. Perfect. As you can see, it has a uh, spotting of red where it's not fully red all the way through and the seed is real red. Right. It's very ripe. Very ripe. I'm going to try it. Boy, that's a juicy peach. Come on, let's go into the house. Um, I have a basket of peaches for the end of Perry Cabin. Great. Hi. Hi. Hi, Margie. Hi. Sound like you had a lot of fun out in the orchard. Uh -huh. <laughs> These are going to be great. Jeff Salter. Oh, Michael. Thank you. Fantastic peaches. Good. Just in time for my cooking demonstration today. Just picked them. Lovely. Enjoy. Great. Thanks very much, Michael. You're welcome. Okay. From the peach orchard to the restaurant, we're here today with Chef Mark Salter from the Inn Perry Cabin in St. Michael's, Maryland. So, Chef, tell me, what are we going to make today? We're going to do a smoked chicken tart with our local Eastern Shore peaches mm. and a lime cumin mayonnaise. And then we're going to do a gratin of fresh local blackberries and Eastern Shore peaches again. And that's going to be served with homemade vanilla ice cream and a little shortbread biscuit. Okay, we're going to make this beautiful smoked chicken tart kim with uh, Eastern Shore peaches. And look here, we have uh, some beautiful snow peas. We've cut into fine strips. We've got some beautiful dates that are going to go into the, uh, the phyllo tart. And then we have some celery, some tomato, little chopped cilantro here, pick cilantro. And of course, we have these wonderful baby greens here, which we're keeping nice and moist with this little damp paper towel. And then the smoked chicken breast here, a couple of slices on top. And then we're going to make this beautiful lime cumin mayonnaise and some smoked chicken slices on top. It's going to be fantastic. Great. Okay, so here we have, underneath this damp paper towel here, we have the phyllo pastry. And they're very, very thin layers of pastry. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull them off very carefully onto the table here. And what I would like you to do, Kim, is to chop the dates for me. So these are the dried dates, and you're going to chop them with the French cook's knife here, nice and small. And you probably want to do about six or seven of them. Okay. okay? And I'm going to start spreading the base of this uh, tart with, this, with some fresh butter. Okay. So we've melted some butter in the microwave. This is regular unsalted butter, and I'm going to start brushing it very carefully, being careful not to tear it. Now, you see above here, we've got, this, uh, we've got layers and layers of this phyllo pastry, and um, what we're going to do is uh, put a little bit of the chopped dates on there, and then we're going to do, in total, probably about three layers. Okay. Uh, we're going to put them together, and then we're going to cut them, and we're going to put them in this little mold here, put another one on top, 
and then bake them in the oven. Okay, Kim, that should be fine. What we're going to do now is just going to make sure they're nice and small here, and we're going to sprinkle them onto the fibre pastry. So this is our first layer. And we actually only put one uh, layer of, with the dates in it, and then we press the other three layers on top, and then we will make our uh, little phyllo tarts. Great. Can you find the dates in any grocery store, or are they a specialty type of item? You can find them in any local store. Yeah, they come in the tubs, or sometimes they come in the packets, but uh, yeah, they're usually airtight, so that's, they keep them nice and moist. So yeah, you shouldn't have a problem with that. Right. Okay. So here we come. This is the final layer now. And I'm just going to brush the top with butter. Okay. And all right, there we go. Now what I want to do now is take the big knife and I'm just going to cut it into, I guess, about probably six pieces now. There we go. And there you go. Uh, okay, we've got six pieces, six equal pieces here now, and what we want to do is we want to take this some pan spray here and just spray the inside just like that. So you want to do, okay. you do the other one. Okay, so we've got that sprayed out now. What we can do quickly is just wrap this back up so it doesn't dry out. And I'll just put this to one side. Okay, that's you, Kim, that'd be great. Thank you. And then we're going to take this and put one of these quarters and we're going to turn it upside down and we're going to push it down into the mould. Okay, we're going to take this top one here and we're going to press it into the bottom here so all the layers are going to be nicely sealed together. And then we're just going to tear around the mould here like this. Okay, and there's our tart and we'll just discard that. And this will be baked in the oven at uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately five to seven minutes. Okay. Yeah, that looks about right. There it is. You can just see at the edge there, it's gone nice and golden brown. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take it out very carefully. Very carefully. And of course, you have to be very careful with this because it's very delicate. So I'm going to pick it up. So it's very hot. I'm going to slide the tart out because if you let it go too cold, the butter will set inside. So let's put it on the plate and then let's our tart to start with. And now we're going to make the salad. Okay, Kim, let's make the smoked chicken salad. We've got some beautiful snow peas here. And as I've as you've seen before, these snow peas here sometimes need picking because they have a little stringy bit that runs down the side here. So I'm just going to grab it at the top and pinch it. And as you can see, this stringy bit comes off. So we discard that and keep the snow pea. Okay, so we've cut the snow peas into uh, little strips here, as you can see, and we've cooked them in a little bit of salted water for about 30 seconds, and then plunged it into ice water and then pulled them out, and this is what we've, we are finished with. After that, we're going to take uh, some local tomatoes here, and this is a whole tomato, and I'm going to push this to one side, and I'm going to cut it into quarters, like this. And all we're going to need here is the skin and the flesh attached. So I'm just going to move this out of the way and you'll see that I'm just going to run the knife down the side here and although we have a little bit of few pips in here we can just scrape those out and then we're just going to cut it into strips. And we're going to cut it into nice strips. And we're going to put it in our little bowl here there we go. We're going to add our snow peas. Okay. And then here we have some celery. So we just take it, hold it at arm's length here, and we run a peeler down from top to bottom, like this, removing all the outer skin. And if you've ever eaten celery in a Bloody Mary before, you'll see how stringy this is and tough, and it's yes. not, it gets all between your teeth and right. oh, horrible. <laughs> okay, so we'll just discard that, give that to you, and then I'm going to cut it into about, I guess about two inch pieces. And again, we're going to cut this into strips or battens. Okay. We'll do the same with this one here. And we're going to add this to our salad. So we've got the tomato in there, we've got the snow pea, and we've got the celery. Mm. So to that, 
we're going to add a little bit of cilantro and I would like you to pick that for me so if you'd like to pick <laughs> some cilantro for me now obviously cilantro is great with you know, lime juice and olive oil and it's obviously very Mexican orientated so it has a little bit of south southwest I guess in this uh, recipe right okay just leave it in whole or just break it up a little yeah you just break it up a little I think it's great okay. nice and rustic's always good right okay so we've got our cilantro in here celery snow peas and tomato we have to add it's a little bit of shredded chicken to it so we have our chicken breast here and this is a smoked chicken breast and I'm just going to slice that we're probably going to try and pull off a little bit of this skin here because that's not very tasty. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of that away. Okay, okay now we're going to do some nice slices. Just like that. Put that to one side and then we're going to cut this into strips. And this is nice and moist so it's going to be beautiful in here. There you go. So that's everything in there now, and now all we have to do is we're going to put it with the tart here, and when we come to finish the salad, we're going to dress that with a little lime juice and olive oil, and some salt and pepper. Wonderful. Okay, Kim, now we're going to make the little dressing that goes on top. We have uh, a shallot here, it's been peeled, and we're going to cut it into dice. So, or, or you know, little, little squares if you can't do dice, and it's no big deal, because we're going to cook them off in a little bit of olive oil, and it's going to add a little substance to the dressing. Okay, I'm going to run this down about three quarters of the way down, because we don't want to go all the way through, because it's going to actually prevent you from getting nice dice. Okay, so I'm just running the knife down here like that, and come through to this last bit here. And obviously you need a sharp knife, a sharp knife really does help. So, actually I think it's time to sharpen my knife. Thank you very much. Just put a nice little edge on it for us. There you go. Thank you very much. And okay, we've run it through twice now, and now we just cut it into nice dice. So I'm just going to cut this like that. You can see. It's a very right. convenient way to chop versus versus slicing the whole onion first. <clears throat> yes, that's right. But you know, there's another. There's an alternative way of doing this. You can put it actually in one of the blenders. Uh, or robo coops, and if you're using about 10 or 12 onions or shallots, you can pulse it and it chops it up nice and fine. But it does bruise it a little bit, but it doesn't make too much difference. So, if you're not comfortable using a knife, then this is an alternative way. Okay, Kim, we're going to have to make the base of the sauce now, to, which goes over the chicken. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tablespoon of olive oil. Okay. That's great. And I'm going to add the shallots. These are the shallots that we just diced. Soaked them really gently. Okay, can you take over from here? Stir the shallots, and we're going to then grab the cumin here. This is ground cumin, okay. and you can buy this in the supermarket as well. And we're going to add that to the shallots. Okay, we're just going to cook this for about another 30 seconds, Kim, and then we're going to put it into this little bowl, and then we're going to add the mayonnaise. Okay. Okay, we're going to put the shallots and the cumin in here in the bowl. Okay. Now, we'll just let that cool down for about 30 seconds and then we're going to add the mayonnaise and some lime juice and a little salt and pepper. So Kim, this is the shallots and the cumin sautéed here. It's cooled down a little bit and we're going to add the mayonnaise. How many cups of mayonnaise? That's one cup of mayonnaise. Okay. And then we've got, we're going to do like three tablespoons of this is sour cream or creme fraiche. You can use either one. So let's do about three tablespoons of that. Okay. And then we're going to stir that together. Does it make a difference if you use low-fat sour cream? No, by all means, use uh, reduced sour cream or reduced low-fat mayonnaise. It's, it's perfect for this recipe. Great. Makes it healthy too. Makes it healthy and it's great for the summertime. Now we're going to add a little bit of lime juice, so we're going to cut the lime in half. And we're going to squeeze some lime juice in there. Of course, lime juice doesn't have any pips, so we're fine. Okay, oh, there you go. Squeeze that in. And we're going to put a pinch of salt, and I use kosher salt here, and a little bit of pepper, a little bit of black pepper. There you go. So mix that through very carefully without spilling it. And we're ready to go with the sauce. Okay, we have this beautiful peach from Mike Fister's farm out on the Route 50, isn't it? Yes, in yeah. Cordova. Cordova, there you go. 
And uh, so it's, as you can see, a peach, you have to give a little press to see whether it's ripe. You should thumb and four fingers, kind of thing like that, and you'll see. Oh, yeah. You see? Uh-huh. Okay, that's perfectly ripe now. So if you wanted to blanch this in some boiling water, the skin would come off nice and easily. If it was too hard, then the skin wouldn't come off at all. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave the skin on and we're going to cut around the stone and make some nice segments. Okay? So we're going to cut the peach. We'll take it off a nice slice here and we'll do one more. The other side. There we go. Put this to one side and now we're going to cut this into some nice, what we call nice slices or segments. So you don't have to remove the skin, you can just leave it on for now? Well, you know, it's the same as the tomato, Kim. Uh, it has extra flavour in there as well, and providing it's, you know, the peaches are right at the height of the season right now, so they're just perfect to eat with the skin. Okay, we're going to add some of the sliced peaches to the salad. Okay. Just a little, maybe a little bit more. Beautiful. Okay, and then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to add some lime juice. Squeeze a little lime juice in the salad. We're going to add a little bit of this lovely French virgin olive oil. It's very quite fruity. Like that. And then we need a little bit of salt and pepper again, Kim. Okay. There's the peppers right there. Thank you. And a little bit of salt. Put a little bit of black pepper. And you can use white pepper as well. It's uh, just as good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mix this through very carefully. Do you want to put a little bit of salt in there? Great. Okay, if you'd like to just hand me that spoon there. And I'm going to mix that through very carefully. Okay. And look at all the colours in there. This is just going to absolutely taste fantastic by the time we've finished putting it together. It looks beautiful. Does the lime juice preserve the vegetables? Um, actually, it doesn't preserve the vegetables. What it does, it actually turns them a dull colour if you add them right at the very beginning. So say we made the salad about 20 minutes ago and we added the lime juice, the vegetables, like the snow peas here, would start to lose their colour. Ah. So, but by adding the olive oil as well, it helps to give it a really nice fresh taste. And it's the same with fresh herbs like uh, cilantro or basil or, or chervil. You always chop them at the very last moment before adding them to something that releases most of their flavour. Okay. We're going to do the plate presentation now, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this lime cumin mayonnaise here and put that in the centre of the plate. And the reason we do that is we don't want the tart to slide. So we'll put that on the top there just like this and push that down. Okay, now it's not going to slide around. Ah, good trick. Good trick. <laughs> and then we're going to add some of our smoked chicken salad with these beautiful Eastern Shore peaches from Michael Fister's farm. There we go, and it's got that lovely fresh cilantro in there as well. Okay, and then we're going to take a couple of slices of the smoked chicken, lay that on top. And here comes the beautiful lime cumin mayonnaise, just a little dollop of that on top, just like that. Okay, and little baby greens here. And we're going to add a little bit of this virgin olive oil here. And a pinch of salt. We're going to put our Eastern Shore peaches, we'll put our Eastern Shore peaches around the outside, I think, and one on top. And to finish some of these lovely, this is baby arugula and baby red orac. And we put this on top here like that. To finish the whole dish, we just drizzle it with a lovely drizzle of this fantastic French virgin olive oil. And there you go, you have this fantastic. Smoked chicken tart with Eastern Shore peaches and a lime cumin mayonnaise. Voila! <laughs> it looks like a beautiful piece of art. Okay, we're going to make this wonderful dessert, Kim, all the way from the Eastern Shore. And it's using Michael Fister's fresh local peaches and some blackberries. And we're going to make a champagne salad on every girl's mm -hmm. dream. Mm -hmm. And we're going to serve it on a little shortbread biscuit with some homemade ice cream. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are. We have the egg yolks. And we're going to put the egg yolks in the bowl. One side, then we have the sugar. We'll add the sugar. How many cups of sugar? Well, there's actually 10 ounces of sugar and 10 egg yolks. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to add to this one cup of champagne. Two. 
great. That's great. From here we're going to go to the stove and we're going to whisk it all together and we're going to beat it until it becomes light and frothy and it's going to form a sabillon. Oh, sounds good. Okay, we're going to beat this now until it forms a sabillon and you, we whisk it in a figure of eight and it helps to aerate the uh, egg yolks, the sugar and the champagne. So what you're doing now is you're putting the bowl on top of the pot with the boiling water similar to a double broiler. Yeah, that's correct, yeah, and the heat from the uh, boiling water is going to actually help to cook the savvy on a little bit, but that's the reason why we're stirring and whisking so vigorously, is so that it doesn't cook in any part of the bowl, and as you can see, it's already starting to double in volume and get a little thicker, and this is all because of the heat of the boiling water underneath. It would, yeah, absolutely. You could use a handheld mixer, just plug it in at the wall there and, and use that instead of whisking it and it does the job for you just the same, yeah. Okay, there we go. This is it. It's nice and thick now. And you can just see the bottom of the pan as you're whisking. And we're just going to start to take it off the heat and beat it cold. And then we're ready to pour it over the, the fresh blackberries and the peaches. Okay, Kim, we have Michael Fister's peaches. And we're going to cut some nice segments out of them on both sides again. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to lay these peach segments around the outside of the plate. Again, we've left the skin on. You can take the skin off if you want, but you have to make sure that the peach is ripe and you just blanch it into boiling salted water and then we shock it in cold water. So let me show you, let me show you how I'd like you to do it. There we go. Um, we're going to take the peaches and I'm just going to lay them like this. Okay. And them out. And them out. And then in between we're going to put a couple of blackberries. Like this. So you can do that. And while you're doing that, we've got these beautiful cookies that you can actually either buy, these little uh, butter cookies, or you can make them yourself. And we're going to put this in the centre of the plate. Okay. There you go. Super. Mm -hmm. There's a couple more. There you go. And we'll put this in the centre of the plate. And we take our beautiful champagne savion and we're going to spoon this all over the berries and the fresh eastern shore peaches. And look at this, isn't this just fantastic? And you can put on as much as you want. This is nice and light, so it's not really heavy. Okay. And we're going to take the blowtorch. If you don't, you can buy these little blowtorch in, in, a, in a store. So we're going to get a lovely glaze on the savvy on here. It smells wonderful too. It almost smells like a creme brulee. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. But you know what else you can do? What I used to do was put the whole plate in the oven for about two minutes at the oven, about 350 degrees Fahrenheit for a couple of minutes. And it also then warms the fruits as well as the mm -hmm. savion. And then you have this lovely ice cold, lovely, lovely ice cold um, ice cream, vanilla ice cream. And of course the contrast and heat and coldness is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a lovely scoop of vanilla ice cream here. Okay, we're going to put that on the shortbread cookie. And to finish, we're going to add a lovely sprig of fresh mint. And there you have this wonderful Michael Fister's Eastern Shore peaches with blackberries and a champagne savion with homemade vanilla ice cream. Can we taste it? Well, I've brought my official taster with me, Kim, and he's a connoisseur of desserts. Ah. Here we go. James, try it. See what you think. Don't get to try some of the peaches as well. Okay. Mmm, that's delicious. Is it? <laughs> Good. It's not bad, is it? You know, the best part of this job is getting to taste the food that we create here. I'd like to thank you for joining us again on Talbot Gourmet, and thank you to Chef Mark Salter from Inn at Perry Cabin in St. Michael's. Please join us again for our next episode of Talbot Gourmet.
Thank you.